With that, let's go on the beat. Robert Mays from The Athletic, brought to you by ChevyDriveChicago.com. Robert, we haven't talked to you in a while. How are you feeling about the Bears franchise right now? Yesterday was an emotionally complicated day for someone invested in the Bears, I think for a bunch of different reasons. Uh, last year, if they had lost that game, you can kind of talk yourself into, eh, this isn't about wins and losses. Draft position matters more than anything else. The franchise is at a different stage, though. The amount of resources they've spent on the defense, where they should be, it, where it was a little bit frustrating and a little bit of a letdown to see that game end the way that it did yesterday. But at the same time, Justin Fields played so well that I found myself thinking about him and his future in a slightly different way than I have before. So there was a lot of stuff to dig through after that one wrapped up in a way I wouldn't necessarily have anticipated coming into the game. All right, so bring us into the process. What were you thinking about Justin Fields going in that changed after you watched the game? I think if they land in a certain spot in the draft, uh, the decision gets made for them. You know, if they get the number one or number two pick and Caleb Williams and Drake Mayer on the board, you move on for a bunch of different reasons. It resets the financial clock. Those two guys are very high level prospects. But when he plays the way that he did yesterday, maybe this is being a prisoner of the moment or being a little bit too flippant in how I'm looking at this. But I watched the way that he looked in that offense, the way that they were using him. And he's so dynamic and the playmaking and the feel and just some of the off platform throws that he made. And you could start to talk yourself into, well, what could you do? with those picks? What could you build around him and the rest of the roster that you've started to put together? And for anyone who's ever listened to me on Justin Fields, I've never been someone who has really drank the Kool-Aid and talked myself into him. I've been very lukewarm on him for the most part. So for me to get to that place after yesterday, I'm sure there are a lot of other Bears fans who are closer to the fence who had to really kind of take a step back yesterday and think about what he could look like long term, whether it's here or somewhere else. It's funny that you bring it up because yesterday, as we're getting ready to watch the game, the Ian Rappaport report on the Bears, where it was kind of similar language to what we had heard Ryan Poles talk about before. They have to be blown away by one of the guys that you would pick in the top five as quarterback to move on from Justin Fields. It actually does feel like to me, at least the front office and maybe the head coach are really giving him an opportunity to show him that he can be the guy. Part of that, I think, is probably a little bit of gamesmanship. You want to drum up value for him as you get down the stretch. You don't want it to seem like you're absolutely going to take a quarterback because if you want to trade him or you want to trade one of those picks, it's important to kind of keep all of your cards. But for me, it was more about these guys are going to blow you away in a way that maybe last year's quarterback class didn't. I know C.J. Stroud has been fantastic, but he was not considered the type of prospect that these two guys are. So this always seemed to me like a likely ending of them if they landed with one of those two picks, moving on from Justin Fields, getting what they could for him, and kind of turning the page on the franchise. But if things shake out in the draft where maybe it's a little bit muddier, a little bit less clear about what you should do, it's becoming easier if he keeps playing like this to talk yourself into what a future with Justin Fields might look like. Let's run a scenario here. Let's say the Bears have three and five. Like Those are their picks. Justin Fields there, instead of maybe reaching for one of the quarterbacks, is, that, is it Marvin Harrison Jr. time and find yourself a left tackle? Maybe, yeah. I think that, that that almost is the worst case scenario because then you're out of range and do you try to package those to move up? Is there a team picking at one or two that doesn't need a quarterback? That doesn't seem all that realistic. We'll see what happens with Arizona and Kyler. But if that's where it lands and you don't feel like you can make a move up the board, then yeah, I, I think you pick Marvin Harrison Jr. You pop him right next to DJ Moore. You've got a pretty dynamite receiving duo in that case. And if you think that one of the either Joe Alt or the guy from Penn State is a clear upgrade over Braxton Jones, and that's the right way to go with that pick, then I wouldn't be upset with that at all. And now you've got a supporting cast where, okay, may maybe we're really cooking here. So I think it's important to not live and die with these conversations every single week and to kind of press pause on them until we get to the end of the year. But when he has a game like he had yesterday, it's easy to start getting a little bit more ahead of yourself. Where are you at when it pertains to, as it pertains to the head coach and the general manager and whether their seats should be warm? I think the coaching seats should be warmer than the general manager. 
I think he's made some really tough choices and some really bad moves. The Chase Claypool trade, obviously, is one of the worst decisions a front office has made over the last couple of years in the NFL. But for the most part, I think a lot of the other stuff that they've done is defensible. I understand the thinking behind it, even if it's been a little bit divisive in moments. On the coaching staff side of it, I think it's harder to talk yourself into it. You know, that defense... They have a lot of pieces they didn't have last year. They invested in a way that they didn't over the last couple of years. And the results have been better. They've been much better defensively than they were last year, obviously. They've been kind of a top five-ish unit according to certain metrics. It's buoyed by a bad schedule. But you look at what they put on the field yesterday and some of the late-game decision-making. That, to me, is a little bit harder to justify than keeping Ryan Poles around. I don't think hitting the reset button overall is necessarily the best thing in the, it's in the best interest of the franchise moving forward. They've had so many changes. I think we've seen GMs kind of come out of these sorts of funks. With the coaching staff, I think it's much easier to know what you have after a couple of seasons. So that's the one I would be a little bit more concerned about. So we just saw the Lions snatch a victory from the Bears. What are your thoughts on the job that Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell, what they've done, and whether there's anything there that the Bears could maybe replicate? I think they've done a fantastic job. You could give Dan Campbell coach of the year. We handed out midseason awards on our show last week. I did. My co-host gave executive of the year to Brad Holmes. I think you could absolutely do that. There are some aspects, I think, that teams can pull from that would be good building blocks moving forward for rebuilding franchises. One, bringing the right sorts of guys into the building. You know, that can be cliche, and that's hard to pin down exactly what that means, but they've done a really thoughtful job of making sure they were bringing in players with the right attitude, mindset, approach consistently across the board. And you can see that with the way that they play. They have a certain play style where they're going to get after you, and that's extremely important. The other thing that I think is even more copyable for some of these franchises is they haven't cut off pathways to development for young players. There were so Mm. many chances in free agency over the last couple of years where the Lions could have signed mid-tier free agents at some of these spots, but in rea- they never did that. They really gave those chances to some of the younger players on the roster. Aleem McNeil is a very good example. Some of the guys that play linebacker for them, Barnes, who's been able to develop They've really given those chances and those reps to in-house people and come along at the right time and on the right timeline. And I think not getting ahead of yourself in the process, that's something that smart teams, as they're trying to build for the future, can definitely take and apply to their own rosters. All right, Robert, i got to go back to the Bears for a second. My old radio partner, Martellus Bennett, had some things to say on Twitter about the Bears as a franchise. and. Here it is. Bears ownership lacks futurism. The entire business model is built on selling the past, the 85 Bears. They're always trying to recreate that old product instead of buying into and producing a new product. This was a long thread from Martellus. I think he made a lot of good points. As someone who is as close as a a national name can be to, to this Bears team, what do you think of what he had to say? I think it was spot on. I actually really liked a lot of the stuff that he had to say because it does feel like that. And there have been moments and flashes where it feels like they've tried to step outside of that a little bit. Even hiring somebody like Mark Tressman, he was such a weird hire in the moment, but you want it to be offensive focused and creative and things that it wasn't for so long under previous regimes. And some of those things have fallen flat. But I do think that there's been a lack of excitement, a lack of offensive star power, lack of just a overall creative juice on the offensive side of the ball with everybody they seem to have hired. So I get that. And that's before even getting into what the tone of the building feels like. I'm hoping that if they end up moving on from this staff, they go with an offensive minded coach who can kind of take them into the 21st century in the correct way. And you would hope that bringing in Kevin Warren and having some new leadership there will allow them to avoid some of the pitfalls that we've seen over the last couple of decades. That might be wishful thinking, but I think a lot of that just kind of static, stale feel to what the franchise is and what Martellus was getting at. I think a lot of us around Chicago can feel that. The Athletics Football Show is a must if you are a football fan. This man right here does a great job on it. Robert, thanks for spending some time with us tonight on Football Night in Chicago. Anytime. Talk to you soon.